Welcome back to Nature League. It's the second week of the month, and that means it's time for a field trip. This month is all about evolution and speciation, and during our lesson plan, we discuss several kinds of speciation. For this field trip, we've come to Glacier National Park to learn about a special topic related to this theme, hybridization. The West Slope cutthroat trout is a subspecies of cutthroat trout, which holds the distinction of being Montana's state fish. One of the biggest threats to West Slope cutthroat trout in Montana is hybridization with other fish species and the loss of genes unique to this species. We checked in with Jeff Strait, a PhD student at the University of Montana, to learn more about the research being done to monitor the West Slope cutthroat trout. Hybridization, tell me, what is that process? So hybridization is just the interbreeding between individuals of two distinct populations or species. It doesn't imply anything about the success or failure of that encounter between those individuals. It just implies that it occurs. There's a broad range of consequences that can occur as a result of, of hybridization. So what are some negative consequences, particularly in what we're seeing right out here in Montana with these fish? Especially the state of Montana and, and a lot of groups value native species, value unique species. And so hybridization is a homogenizing force, you know, combine, you're essentially combining two different species and reducing biodiversity in that sense. Ecologically, some of the consequences um, of hybridization in, in, in this particular case study of West Slope Cutthroat and Rainbow are that we've seen lower fitness in hybrid individuals. And that's really concerning to, the, to fish managers and fish biologists in the state, as well as anglers, because if there's lower reproductive success, lower fitness in hybrids, you might see populations crashing. So the West Slope cutthroat trout, that's a subspecies of cutthroat, mm -hmm. and that's a, one of the state fish of Montana, right? So people yep. love this individual. But rainbow trout, what's their story? Kind of how did they get here? So rainbow trout were not native to most of Montana. They're, there's one river system that runs through the northwest corner where they are native, and they overlap with cutthroat trout there. But you know, due to just human activity, we love to fish and we love to fish for multiple species. So rainbow trout have been stocked on almost every continent across across the planet. Right. Stocked across the state of Montana, as well as a number of other species of, of trout and, and fishes as well. The issue here though is that obviously like we've been talking about, they can interbreed with our with a native species. Now they're on the same their landscape together, they overlap spatially where they never would have overlapped, and we're seeing as a result of that introgression between these two different species. Introgression is a process, right, when we're typically talking about genes or genomic material. Mm -hmm. So how would you kind of define introgression? Introgression is just the incorporation of genes from one population or species into another. Sure, and we're seeing this with some of the, the cutthroat trout, particularly in the area that we were able to sample. So we were able to go out uh, with the field crew and saw all kinds of things happening, um, but I wanted to follow up and see a little bit about what is that data and kind of what is it telling us? We've been doing this field work out there, capturing individuals in these streams and um, pit tagging them with, with a little unique code that allows us to identify them individually as we recapture them in the future. And so from those recapture data, we're gonna get things like growth rate, survival estimates, movement data. So it, does the individual remain as a resident in these streams or are they moving out to the bigger river system where they will ultimately grow larger and come back as a larger migratory individual. So we're using all of these to see how hybridization and introgression with rainbow trout might affect multiple fitness traits because there's a lot of evidence out there showing that in some cases, hybridization between two species can cause a negative response in, in some fitness trait, but not, it's not consistent across all these traits. What are you guys seeing so far? Are you seeing positive effects, negative effects? What's it looking like on the ground? There was an original paper, really the, the heavy hitter in this case showed that there was severe outbreeding depression, so in, in the form of reproductive success. So hybrids had much lower reproductive success, fewer offspring than, than a pure cutthroat in this one system. However, we've seen hybridization can, or introgression continues to spread across the landscape, which would suggest that they must be successful to some degree. Sure. And then there's another paper that looked at landscape patterns as well, but also detected signatures of selection against rainbow trout alleles. There's been evidence that there's selection against rainbow trout introgression, but we're still seeing this pattern of spread. And so that's where we're really excited to get the data set I've been working on analyzed and out there is because we're gonna be able to look at fitness, multiple fitness traits across multiple populations, many years of data, thousands of individuals, and it's really gonna hopefully shed some light on how variable are the consequences, what traits are positively influenced, what traits are negatively influenced, and then the ultimate goal would be to wrap that all together and to be, what does this mean for, for West Slope Cutthroat Trout in Western Montana, and do we need to be worried, is introgression gonna sort itself out or do we need to take a more direct management action to prevent this mm -hmm. continued spread of, of rainbow trout hybridization? And now a word. 
Not from our sponsors, but from the dictionary. Welcome to this month's Wild Word. Once a month on Nature League, we'll look at the etymology, or origin and history, of words related to nature. This month's theme is evolution and speciation, and during our lesson plan, we discussed the two main types of speciation, allopatric and sympatric. We defined and discussed these terms, but we didn't break them down in terms of etymology. Let's do that now. Allopatric and sympatric are not words that are used in common conversation. However, the pieces of these words are derived from some classics that get used in our language all the time. Let's first look at the common piece of these words. That's the Patrick part at the end, allopatric and sympatric. But what does that piece mean? Patrick comes from the Latin patria, which means homeland or native land. This comes from the Latin pater, which means father. This is shared with Greek as patra in that language means fatherland. We commonly use the word patriotic in English to refer to feelings about the homeland, and Patrick is that same concept. All right, so now we're left with allo homeland and sim homeland. Let's check out these prefixes. Allo comes to us from the Greek allos, which means other or different. So allopatric means different homeland. The prefix sim also comes from Greek. This root word is sin, and it means alike or together. So sympatric means together homeland. I love these words because they perfectly explain the concepts of their respective speciation events. Allopatric speciation is defined as a speciation event occurring when populations are separated in space and become reproductively isolated, whereas sympatric Patrick speciation is reproductive isolation occurring within the same geographical area. But we don't even need these definitions because the words themselves tell the story. Allopatric speciation literally means different homeland speciation, and sympatric speciation literally means together homeland speciation. That's exactly what these evolutionary events are, and that is pretty wild. In the state of Montana, their state agency has it in their mission statement to conserve native fishes and native species generally. And so there is a big push from within the agency to understand what's going on here and try to conserve pure Wesso populations where they still exist, which according to the last estimate might be only 10% of their historic distribution. So it's really taken a high priority in, in the regions I've been working in and the managers are really excited to get the results and start conserving Wesso. The constructed lines of what we call a species and the consequences of when those lines get crossed are one of the biggest topics in wildlife conservation. The effects and values associated with hybridization and introgression are complicated and deserve consideration from multiple angles. As for the West Slope cutthroat trout, only time and more data will inform us of the fate of one of Montana's favorite species. Mm -hmm.